I want to now turn your attention to the state of Alberta's EMS system. Things aren't great. They have improved a bit over the past 15 months. Welcome to another enlightening episode of the Cross Border Interviews. The Alberta municipalities launched their Think Alberta Vote Local campaign at the beginning of election 2023 in the province of Alberta. This is dedicated to ensuring that the political parties and candidates address the key issues that matter to the 275 member communities. Now, today we are turning our attention to their last topic during the Alberta provincial election, an issue that resonates with communities from across the province healthcare services, and the pressing need for investments in regional communities. Now, it's no secret that large and small communities alike have experienced the unfortunate closure of local clinics while some hospitals are forced to operate on limited hours. The impacts of these closures extend beyond inconveniences. It directly affects the well-being and accessibility of essential health care for residents. The shortage of health care professionals in regional communities exacerbates these challenges, creating a growing gap in health care provisions. Investing in these communities is not only a matter of convenience, it is a critical step in attracting and retaining health care professionals. By creating an environment that supports and values their work, Work, we encourage these professionals to build their lives and careers in these regions. The ripple effect of these such investments is immense. When communities offer the healthcare services and medical facilities that current and future residents need, they foster an environment where families can thrive and flourish. EMS response times have been a cause of concern over the last several years, with paramedics often grappling with burnouts due to extensive demands. Now, during the organizational's third and final press conference of the election cycle, Kathy Heron, the president of Alberta Municipalities, didn't hold back when discussing health care, especially the state of EMS in the province. I want to now turn your attention to the state of Alberta's EMS system. Things aren't great. They have improved a bit over the past 15 months. In January 2022, the provincial government established a provincial EMS advisory committee to provide immediate long-term recommendations to the Minister of Health. I was among those appointed to this committee and I was proud to bring Alberta municipalities perspective, informed by our 275 member communities to this table. Although some improvements have been made, reports continue to emerge that the delayed ambulance dispatches with response time stretching up to two hours in some areas, this poses a serious risk to the health and safety of residents who depend on timely emergency medical assistance. The voices of local elected officials are crucial in this dialogue. They are the ones closest to the people, deeply familiar with the unique needs and challenges of their communities. Now it is essential that their suggestions for improvements be heard and respected by the next government, ensuring that decisions are made with a comprehensive understanding of community needs. Alberta Municipalities President Mayor Kathy Heron, the mayor of St. Albert, spoke about how a call to 911 ended with a family member going to a Fort Saskatchewan hospital. I can share some personal anecdotes because this is important, not, not just to me, but to all of Alberta. And it's nice to bring it home. About six months ago, I needed an ambulance at a family member's house. Uh, a van arrived with an advanced care paramedic on board, assessed my family member's situation and realized they needed an ambulance, which I probably could have told them when I called 911 in the first place. The ambulance, I live in St. Albert, had to come from Fort Saskatchewan because there was none available in my city. And we're a big centre. It's still another 30 minutes waiting for an ambulance to arrive and they had to go back to Fort Saskatchewan because the hospital in St. Albert, which is only a five-minute drive from my parents' house, was not available. So... 
Now, when it comes to healthcare as a whole, Alberta municipalities does not solely blame the current government, but past governments as well. This is a serious issue that we want to focus on. So I have mentioned there's been some improvements, but there's a lot more to do. It took years, as I said before, for this situation to develop, and it's going to take years to fix it. Now, here's today's press conference in its entirety with Alberta Municipalities President Kathy Heron. This is the third of our three major issues our association wants to bring to Alberta's attention during the 2023 provincial general election. You can watch the other two that were presented last week and the week before uh, if, by asking for a link. But today we're going to really focus on healthcare. We did shine a spotlight on Alberta's $30 billion municipal infrastructure deficit on May 9th. And on May 16th, we encouraged Albertans to ask candidates who is the best plan to address the root causes of crime in your communities. We're doing this as part of Alberta municipalities' nonpartisan Think Alberta Vote Local public information campaign. The goal of our campaign is to ensure political parties and candidates address the key issues that matter to our 275 municipal member communities during this election. And frankly, this is important to all Albertans. For more information on our Think Alberta Vote Local Information Cam, visit our website, sorry, campaign, visit our website, abmunis.ca. So, community health care, top issue in this election. As local candidates debate issues in their communities across Alberta, the one thing that comes up time and time again is health care. To start, medical professional associations tell us between 650,000 and 1 million Albertans are currently without a family physician or primary health care provider. Without access to primary health care, health conditions can worsen and new concerns may not be detected until they are more difficult or even impossible to treat. Some practitioners are either scaling back their hours or retiring or these family doctors and they're just not easy to replace. We're also worried about mounting evidence that some paramedics, nurses, doctors are leaving their professions because they're fed up, overworked and burned out. Access to specialized medical treatment and laboratories is yet another concern. We all are aware of the wait times at emergency rooms and the availability and timing of an ambulance and a paramedic to arrive at your house when in need is a serious concern. I realize I've painted a fairly bleak picture of the current state of Alberta's healthcare system. It's extremely serious and a very complex issue. It took years for this situation in Alberta to get to this point, and realistically, it will take a commitment of a, ser of a serious long-term plan to resolve it. Regardless of which party forms government after May 29th, Alberta's next provincial government will face challenges on the health care front. I want to now turn your attention to the state of Alberta's EMS system. Things aren't great. They have improved a bit over the past 15 months. In January 2022, the provincial government established a provincial EMS advisory committee to provide immediate long-term recommendations to the Minister of Health. I was among those appointed to this committee and I was proud to bring Alberta municipalities perspective, informed by our 275 member communities to this table. I, it was refreshing actually to be consulted and engaged by the provincial government on such a critical issue. A 10 point plan was rolled out by Alberta Health Services based on the advisories, there are initial recommendations. And this did result in some noticeable improvements to the EMS system. Specifically, provincial EMS weight room transfer of care guidelines for the timely and safe handoff of EMS patients to emergency department waiting rooms resulted in patients receiving medical treatment much more quickly and getting our crews back on the streets uh, faster. The advisory committee's final report with its 53 recommendations was shared with Albertans on January 16, 2023. So we are tracking how these recommendations are being implemented and if they're making a difference. I can share some personal anecdotes because this is important not, not just to me but to all of Alberta and it's nice to bring it home. About six months ago I needed an ambulance at a family member's house. Uh, a van arrived with a, 
advanced care paramedic on board, assessed my family member's situation and realized they needed an ambulance, which I probably could have told them when I called 911 in the first place. The ambulance, I live in St. Albert, had to come from Fort Saskatchewan because there was none available in my city. And we're a big centre. It's still another 30 minutes waiting for an ambulance to arrive and they had to go back to Fort Saskatchewan because the hospital in St. Albert, which is only a five minute drive from my parents' house, was not available. So it's things like that that we hear about nonstop. I've done ride-alongs more than once and I have sat in emergency rooms for hours twiddling my thumbs with the crews of five or six ambulance waiting for their patients to get accepted into the emergency room. We need to get these paramedics back on the street faster and we need to give them the confidence that they're going to get home to their families on time. This is just one example and you're going to hear a couple more from my colleagues in a minute. But this is a serious issue that we want to focus on. So I have mentioned there's been some improvements, but there's a lot more to do. It took years, as I said before, for this situation to develop and it's going to take years to fix it. That's why I encourage Albertans to ask candidates who show up at their doors who has the best plan for improving emergency medical services in my community. Also at today's press conference was Legal Mayor Trina Jones, who has personally witnessed the departure of medical professionals in her community with her own immediate family as well. Only her husband now has a stable physician as her doctor recently informed her of his pending retirement. On a personal note, the doctor that I've been seeing for 30 years is retiring. My daughters have aged out of the pediatric system, which leaves only my husband with a stable physician situation. Jones urged the next government to take action to address this issue, warning that Alberta will experience a snowball effect on health care if consistency is not maintained. With complex medical issues over the last few years, it's led to the problem that we've had no consistent touch point and resorting to medicine, many centers for our issues. This is not just us. Without consistency, it leads to a snowball effect with more ambulance calls, more ER visits, and generally more pressure on our already strained system. For folks with transportation issues, this leads to added pressures. AHS discontinued dispatching our volunteer ambulance service in 2013. We finally have a part-time, one day a week, family doctor in town, and he's already at capacity. Again, here is today's press conference in the entirety with Legal Mayor Trina Jones. So bottom line, it isn't easy to, attra easy to attract and retain medical professionals. I want to spend a few minutes talking about the challenges communities of all sizes and locations face when it comes to attracting and retaining medical doctors, nurses, and other healthcare professionals. For starters, last three years have been very difficult for Alberta's medical professionals. Their contributions throughout the pandemic were truly remarkable, and they deserve to be recognized for all of their efforts and their accomplishments. Nevertheless, some family doctors are either scaling back their medical practices or retiring. Other healthcare professionals are tapping out or stepping away. Some say they're burnt out. Others say they're fed up. Regardless of the reason, they're leaving. This has led to healthcare shortages throughout Alberta that have increased pressure on an already strained provincial system. As Ren pointed out a few minutes ago, whenever adequate healthcare resources are not available within our communities, it can be a life-altering predicament for those residents. Other members, municipalities are competing with communities across Canada and the world for medical professionals. We as small communities can only do so much for our cities, our villages, and our towns to attract healthcare professionals. Rec centers, schools, parks, low taxes, they can improve a community's chances of attracting a family doctor, but that's not all of what we can do. And they only go so far. Like most of us, medical professionals are seeking a stable, trusting, respectful relationship with their employer. On a personal note, the doctor that I've been seeing for 30 years is retiring. My daughters have aged out of the pediatric system, which leaves only my husband with a stable physician situation. With complex medical issues over the last few years, it's led to the problem that we've had no consistent touch point and resorting to medicine, many centers for our issues. This is not just us. Without consistency, it leads to a snowball effect with more ambulance calls, more ER visits, and generally more pressure on our already strained system. 
for folks with transportation issues, this leads to added pressures. AHS discontinued dispatching our volunteer ambulance service in 2013. We finally have a part-time, one day a week, family doctor in town, and he's already at capacity. All of this cascades into the need for an all-system, province-wide, long-term plan. So for the last 15 minutes or so, the three of us talked about the current state of Alberta's healthcare system and described the major challenges our communities face. Some improvements to the EMS system have been made over the past 15 months, but dozens more improvements are needed. Meanwhile, communities across Alberta are struggling to attract, retain, and keep medical, professions, med medical professionals as people choose to retire or leave the profession completely. Alberta is exploring several unconventional but effective ways to deliver healthcare better, even to the point of local governments taking on their own clinics, something the city of Cold Lake is doing right now. We've made some headway, but much, much more needs to be done. When the next provincial prov government gets to work, we hope this is a priority. So this election, we call on all Albertans to keep healthcare top of mind. Also at today's Alberta Municipalities press conference was Ren Giesbach, the mayor of the Summer Village of West Cove, who talked about the ongoing challenges of providing health care in his and other rural communities and where that pressure is coming from. And surprisingly, it's not where you think. Uh, recruiting doctors has always been an issue. We're about 1.5 doctors short now in that uh, in that particular clinic. And we receive requests for family doctors from Edmonton, Spruce Grove, Stony Plain. And last year we had a, a request from uh, Fort, uh, Fort McMurray. Uh, so that, again, this is an ongoing issue. We were fortunate enough that we, uh, we did qualify in the region for, for a medical lab uh, facility. So we have those services out there. But under the, uh, the guidelines from Alberta Health, we do not qualify for medical x-ray services. So this increases the travel time and the distance for residents to uh, get to the city for that, uh, for that service. He also went on to say that one option the next government must look at when it comes to providing health care in smaller communities is nurse practitioners. Primary medical care is a challenge in rural communities. Attracting and re retaining primary care doctors to communities is an ongoing issue. Uh, frequently, uh, retaining them is an issue as well. They may come out for a few years and then they want to move to an urban center. Uh, there is another medical practitioners that uh, could help in that situation, and that would be uh, nurse practitioners. But an issue for us is even awareness of what nurse practitioners are and what they can do. Their uh, education and training is similar to GPs. They can diagnose, order tests, prescribe medication, and refer to doctors and to specialists. But again, not many small communities are aware or will consider them for recruitment into, uh, into their uh, clinics. Uh, one of the issues is how Alberta Healthcare funds nurse practitioners. They must go through a doctor to bill AHS, and they cannot direct bill. It has to be under a doctor's supervision. Now, here's today's press conference in its entirety with Mayor of Summer Village of West Cove, Ren Giesbarak. There is pressures, without a doubt, in our current healthcare system within Alberta. Uh, this is uh, even exacerbated in small communities and uh, in rural Alberta. An example of that, in, uh, in our region, uh, where I live, this is the east end of Lexington County, uh, we did not qualify for a uh, medical center there under Alberta Health uh, Guidelines. So Laxanan County uh, provided the leadership, and then along with Onaway and several summer villages, uh, we formed uh, the Onaway Regional Medical Center. This, uh, this center uh, serves three um, uh, seniors centers as well as a growing population in the in the east end of the county with uh, with acreage developments and uh, uh, more people moving into uh, into our villages now uh, this center is considered a private center it wasn't uh, funded through Alberta health 
So we received no assistance in uh, recruiting doctors. Uh, we received no uh, assistance from the, the rural uh, health uh, 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 rural health action plan. So six months ago, we had asked the minister if he could change the status from a private clinic to a public clinic. He indicated that uh, he would be doing so, but that has not happened uh, yet. Uh, recruiting doctors has always been an issue. We're about 1.5 doctors short now in that, uh, in that particular clinic. And we receive requests for family doctors from Edmonton, Spruce Grove, Stony Plain. And last year we had a, a request from uh, Fort, uh, Fort McMurray. Uh, so that, again, this is an ongoing issue. We were fortunate enough that we, uh, we did qualify in the region for, for a medical lab uh, facility, so we have those services out there. But under the, uh, the guidelines from Alberta Health, we do not qualify for medical x-ray services. So this increases the travel time and the distance for residents to uh, get to the city for that, uh, for that service. We do have a senior uh, busing uh, transport system. It's called the East End Bus. And they do transport some elderly uh, patients to appointments. But again, coming to Onaway is a lot shorter distance and uh, easier for them than having to transport uh, to Spruce Grove or, uh, or Stony Plain for appointments. Now, emergency services is also an issue for us. Uh, we do, we're fortunate enough to have uh, an ambulance and paramedic station at Alberta Beach. Uh, we also have Laxanne County uh, Fire Services, and we do have a private company, Onaway Regional Fire Services, that provides fire protection to, uh, to Onaway, Alberta Beach, and several uh, of the summer villages in our area. Uh, Onaway Regional Fire Services in 2022 had 276 calls. 187 of them were medical assist calls. Uh, they did not get paid um, for, uh, by Alberta Healthcare for uh, those medical assist calls and they do not get paid by the municipalities. So this is strictly voluntary. Their average response time was nine minutes to a call and often they were faster than the paramedics or the ambulance. They stabilized the patient while waiting for the ambulance to transport. Wait times after the, uh, for the ambulance after Onaway Regional Fire Services arrives uh, is usually about an additional 14 minutes. And at times it's been up to uh, uh, 20 to 35 minutes longer. And you couple that with the distance for transportation to a hospital. And for us, depending on where you are within the county, it's uh, 40 minutes to a city hospital or it's 40 minutes to uh, the Barhead Hospital. And again, which one they attend uh, often depends on the nature of the trauma. Wait times at the hospital for uh, an ambulance uh, in the past has really been significant. And uh, that, again, uh, makes it difficult for those ambulances to get back to our area and increases uh, the length it takes for them to respond. Or we have to have uh, an ambulance from a different region uh, come in to, uh, to assist. So primary medical care is a challenge in rural communities. Attracting and re retaining primary care doctors to communities is an ongoing issue. Uh, frequently, uh, retaining them is an issue as well. They may come out for a few years and then they want to move to an urban center. Uh, there is another medical practitioners that uh, could help in that situation, and that would be uh, nurse practitioners. But an issue for us is even awareness of what nurse practitioners are and what they can do. Their uh, education and training is similar to GPs. They can diagnose, order tests, prescribe medication and refer to doctors and to specialists. But again, not many small communities are aware or will consider them for recruitment into, uh, into their uh, clinics. Uh, one of the issues is how Alberta Healthcare funds nurse practitioners. They must go through a doctor to bill AHS and they cannot direct bill. It has to be under a doctor's supervision. We have over 800 nurse practitioners in Alberta and if uh, the funding model changed and the uh, awareness uh, uh, and we let people know that they are available, we might have another group that we can attract to rural communities.
Now, with less than a week till Election Day, Alberta Municipalities President Kathy Heron stated that she has seen the plans from the major parties and looks forward to working with whichever party gets into power on May 29th. I would say that both parties have identified health care and especially, you know, physician attraction as a priority. I've heard both of the leaders say that you will not have to pay for, uh, to, to visit your family doctor. So these are the promises that we want to uh, be kept after the election. After May 29th will be really key to see, you know, how they follow through. I said it earlier that I don't expect any quick and immediate fixes. This is a, this is a complex situation that's taken years um, to develop and it's going to take years to fix. But it's, it, I do believe there was plans on both sides. Now for Legal, which is situated just north of the city of St. Albert, Mayor Trina Jones says that her hope is for the next government to focus on the tackling of the EMS issues in the province. I think from my perspective, uh, tackling the EMS system, especially when it comes to ambulances and response times, um, Kathy's story and uh, the ambulance coming from Fort Saskatchewan, chances are her ambulance was in my community. Uh, we've had ambulances respond from Slave Lake, Lac La Biche, Thorhild, Onoway, um, and, and many from St. Albert. Um, I think this issue needs to be addressed with more ambulances on the road, more trained professionals, and a general, generally a bigger focus on those response times and keeping ambulances in their communities. And for Mayor Griesbach, he says and he hopes that the next government will help with attracting new medical professionals, not only to larger urban centers, but to smaller rural communities as well. Thank you. For, uh, for our region, I think the primary concern is assistance with uh, uh, recruiting and, uh, and keeping our medical uh, primary medical practitioners in, in our area. Um, Again, as I said, Onaway Regional uh, Medical Clinic is, is 1.5 short. And again, we, uh, we don't qualify for that assistance from, uh, from Alberta Healthcare. Uh, a story, uh, one, of, one of my friends, resident of Alberta Beach, had a medical concern with her son. He had hit his head, uh, bumped his head at, at school, and he seemed to be okay uh, for about a week or so, but then as he went back to school, uh, he was uh, getting headaches. So she thought she should get him che checked out. So uh, she called her family doctor and found out he had retired. Uh, the clinic was not accepting any other new patients uh, and referred her to, uh, to the emergency. Uh, she did not really feel that it was an emergency uh, situation since it's been a week since he did his head. She, she just wanted uh, follow-up care. So she called 811. 811 also referred her to emergency or to an emergency uh, clinic on the east end of Edmonton, which would have been a significant drive from Alberta Beach. Uh, so you can see that we do need uh, primary uh, health care workers in, uh, in rural and small communities. And finally, Mayor Heron says that she hopes that the next government, whoever it may be, addresses some of the preventive measures when it comes to health care. Well, so my community, St. Albert, is, is a fairly big mid-sized city. We have a full functioning hospital. Um, we have an integrated fire ambulance service. So for the most part, uh, we're well served in St. Albert. I do um, would like to see a little bit more attention given to some of the preventive uh, services that are involved in healthcare, general mental health and suicide prevention and some of the opioid crisis. That would help St. Albert uh, immensely. Most municipalities, and I'm sure my two colleagues will confer, that they are picking up the ball where it's been dropped by the province, that we have putting funding into areas that are generally not a municipal responsibility, such as health care and suicide prevention, but we're paying for that. So I would like FCSS funding to be topped up for sure. That would be one area of focus. But I'm going to actually let the two smaller communities that do have more issues on relying on their neighbours. Now, I want to take a moment and thank you, the viewers, for tuning in for another great conversation, another great episode of the Cross Border Interviews. Now, if you've enjoyed this episode, so please hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all the latest interviews and special episodes that we have coming up. We have some amazing guests lined up and you will not want to miss some of the great interviews that we have coming to you. Now, if you're able to, please consider backing the show to help us continue to bring us 
bring you more content like you've seen today. Every little bit helps and we appreciate your support. A link to our Patreon account is in the show notes below. And don't forget, if you can, if you do have them, please subscribe to our Facebook, our Twitter, our Instagram pages for more behind the scenes content, show updates, and so much more. And finally, as much as we love our phones and technology, let's remember to put down and have real life in-person conversations with the people in our lives, particularly during this election. And I want to take another moment and say this. May 29th is election day. Get out and vote. Your vote matters. Your voice matters. As Alberta Municipalities has been saying, think Alberta, vote local. Let's vote local. Let's vote for the best candidates who will best represent our communities, our municipalities in the legislature. So with that, I've been Chris Brown, your host for the Cross Border Interviews. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. Until then, just remember, just keep talking.